What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be a video on my third channel. I wanted to show you guys my all new bike that I got and I'm super excited about it. This is just something I've been super stoked about. So I'm gonna go over this new bike with you guys and show you all the cool things that I love about it and also some other stuff as well. So let's just dive right into it. Um, this is the 2021 Giant TCR Advanced. This is my fifth TCR that I've ever had. Before I tell you guys about this bike, I wanna let you guys know that the bike I was riding previous to this one was the 2018 TCR Sunweb Edition. That bike, I went through a lot on that bike. I think I probably rode about 20, probably close to 20,000 miles on that bike. And I was pushing about two and a half years on that bike and it definitely served its purpose. It had mechanical Ultegra components on it. It had traditional rim brakes on it. And I ended up actually putting tri bars on it, which is a pretty big no-no in my opinion, but I was just really, uh, I was just getting into the whole triathlon training thing, which I'm still doing. I'm actually in the process of training for an Ironman right now, but that's a completely different subject. But that's what I was riding previous to this one now. Like I said, I've owned a lot of TCRs and it's because I've always loved the giant TCR. Now on my previous TCR, I was running an 1132 cassette with a 3652 crank up front. Now my new TCR is coming with the all new SRAM Red Axis ETAP, which I, I never thought I'd go back to electronic shifting. I actually had SRAM Red on my, on my bike from a few years ago. What a fine piece of machinery. We electronic now. I just got my new bike and I wanted to show you guys all what I got. That fine piece of machinery in the background right there is the all new 2017 Giant Advanced TCR SL0. I, uh, I wanted to go back to electronic shifting but that's a completely different topic for a different day. This is just gonna be a video on the, um, the specifics with a bike. But if you guys wanna see that, I can cover that in a future video so definitely let me know if you guys wanna see that. But anyways, uh, SRAM Red Axis which has been amazing absolutely amazing my first ride on this bike i actually got a chance to try out the new power meter which is an integrated port power meter that they have right there and i averaged uh for the first ride which is four hour ride not a ton of climbing but i believe i averaged about 183 watts on that ride so training with power again has been great like i said if you guys want me to cover that i can definitely do that um, i haven't had a power meter since 2016 a pioneer power meter on my TCR from back then. I've had a lot of TCRs. <laughs> the next thing that stands out on this bike are the Kdex wheels. Definitely got a lot of opinions on these when I posted this bike on my Instagram. A lot of people had a, a lot of different questions. I'll get to those at the very end of this video. I could have gone with the 42s or the 65s. I was also looking at the Zip 404s and also the Zip 808s. And the 808s to me were a little bit too deep. Um, I wanted something that was, I wanted a deeper rim for sure. There are a lot of different conflicting opinions about you know rims when it comes to riding and based on the style of riding you're doing. I admittedly wanted my bike to have the coolness factor and the wheels really stand out. I wanted to stand out a lot more than a bike with shallower rims. 42s just weren't gonna do it for me. I'm just gonna do this for, for you guys right now just so you know how they sound, they sound. So, uh, so the wheels have been awesome. I will say that. The wheels have been awesome. What? They have been awesome. Mm -hmm. Pull problems. Oh, 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 I haven't even, I haven't even gotten to the, the, the tires. So the, the wheels are actually, they're tubeless setup. So if you guys know me, you know, I, if you follow me on Strava or if you just watch videos on this channel or on my other channels, whatever it is, I get a ton of flats. I have gotten more flats this year than I've ever gotten in my entire life. Now, I'm not one of those types of people that just runs over every possible pothole he can find. I don't go out of my way to run over glass. I don't do any of that dumb stuff. I don't think anybody does that, but I'm just trying to make that clear. This this bike was the first real uh, journey for me into the world of, of, tubeless, of tubeless tires. Let me just say I'm not really that impressed. I had the first ride I went out on was the ride I just told you guys about earlier. I actually ended up getting a flat. Not a complete flat though, obviously, because the sealant in the tires did its job. The rear tire is still for me not really, I had to put a tube in it. Ended up getting Kdex's tires to put on these and they were like $200 tires. They're not really doing the best job. The, the front is actually holding up really well, but I've just had a few issues with the tires. Any other issue I've ran into is the rear cassette. 
Now, for some reason, I don't know if I just got a bad batch with these wheels, but uh, my mechanic that I used uh, to help me build this, shout out to you, Nate. I ride a lot of bikes. I'm not really good at building bikes. I know a lot of you wanted to see like a build video specifically on this, but I did not build this. My mechanic, Nate, built it. Now, we were, we're still really puzzled as to why there is wobble going on within the cassette and the free hub. Now I'm gonna put a little video up for you guys right now just so you guys can see it for yourselves how much of a wobble is kind of going on. I haven't really narrowed down an issue yet. Luckily Giant's been really cool and they shipped me out a, another wheel. Um, unfortunately it was still happening with that wheel and it's really concerning because there is a collet inside of the wheel slash free hub and it's basically getting an engraving is going on <laughs> within the wheel right now. I'll actually post a little picture of what the call it looks like. So that's not really good. What we're doing right now is we're looking at the free hub. And um, so what we're doing right now is we're getting an all new free hub and we're thinking it's probably something with the end caps within the wheel. So hopefully that gets fixed because you definitely don't want wobble going on while you're out riding and everything. But apart from the, the tires and the free hub whatever issue is going on there. This bike has been absolutely insane. It's been so cool to be able to train with power again. I would say that the, um, the stiffness of this frame has been absolutely amazing, at least for the, the type of riding that I do. I'm, I would like to consider myself a, a decently powerful rider. I like being able to shift knowing that my gears are going to shift smooth and responsive. The other big move I made with this bike was going from 172.5 cranks down to 170 cranks. I have never done this before. I honestly haven't really noticed a huge difference moving from 172.5 to 170s, but what I did do, I ended up going with a 4835 up front and a 33 cassette in the back. Basically with the amount of climbing that I do, it makes it much more efficient on those climbs. And so just being out of the saddle on my climbs and really just working on my efficiency, especially with my cadence, I've noticed a huge, huge difference in my rides and they just feel so much better. And like I was talking about earlier, cadence, power and all that, they've integrated a quark power maker into this bike, which has been awesome. Like I said, training with power again has been really eye-opening for me just because I like having data and I like having numbers to be able to go off of, especially when it comes down to getting better, getting stronger, getting faster on the bike. Having that information out there for me now is really eye-opening because before I was kind of just intuitively training. I thought I knew what my cadence was. I thought I knew what my power output was, but now just knowing everything has been really, really, really awesome. Now I'm gonna answer some questions I got really quickly on my Instagram that you guys have asked me about this bike because I did post this. It's been about two weeks that I've ridden this bike and uh, the first week I put on about 400 miles, which is pretty typical for me. I'm riding about 400 to 400 miles a week. 400 between 400 and 450 miles a week. So I definitely wanted a bike that was gonna be able to, to hold up to all of that riding. The number one question people were asking is why I decided to go with SRAM over Shimano. And this is, this is basically like asking somebody whether they prefer Apple or Windows. It's just personal preference. I've ridden Shimano Durace. I've ridden SRAM Red. I've ridden Shimano Ultegra. I've ridden so many different group sets from both brands. And for me, I've just found that when it comes to electronic shifting, I definitely am more of a fan of SRAM. It's, it's a far more superior group set in my opinion. That is just my personal preference. And that's just the, all I'm gonna say about that. You know, everybody's gonna have an opinion when it comes down to different companies, but that is who I prefer when it comes down to electronic group sets. So, and the second most commonly asked question I got, basically everyone wanted to know why I decided to go with 65 mil wheels. And I pretty much explained that already. I really wanted something that like, I wanted a bike that was light, but also that looked cool. I believe these are like 1500 grams for the actual pair. But I will say that the wheels are super cool. They're also, they do catch wind. They catch a lot of wind. And in San Diego lately, it's been very, it's been extra windy. And so I'm having to really, I'm really having to alter my riding a lot more to be able to, to I'm, I'm having to acclimate to that again. Uh, I had a real, a long time ago, one of my first, I won't say my first bike, it was like my third bike, was a Fuji SST 1.0. And they ha it had these super deep, oval wheels on it. I believe those were like 70s. So I've ridden deeper rimmed wheels before. So having to adjust to crosswinds again is definitely, it's definitely an experience, it's especially over the past three rides. I've learned that when riding wheels like this, it's not necessarily the winds you really have to worry about. It's cars and really, really big trucks. I'm not gonna actually, I'm not gonna explain the science why it can get pretty scary. 
but it's okay. The other question I got was about disc brakes, and this is actually my second bike with disc brakes. I had a Giant Defy in 2016, which is kind of like a casual bike for me that was that had disc brakes. At the end of the day, there is a, there is a difference there. You know, the stopping power is is there, and I do notice it. But their brakes, I don't really think too like brakes or brakes. In terms of weight for all of this, this bike is very, very, very light. A lot of people want to know how much this weighs, and the I don't really have a definite answer for you. My mechanic and I did not weigh this bike. If I were to put a weight on it, it's probably 16 or 17 pounds. I'll probably have to double check that later, but if you guys really want to know that, I'll put that in my next bike video. The last question that people want to know about this bike is how much it cost. So what I did with this bike is I did a custom build, obviously. The way that I did it is I pieced everything out from frame to wheels to group set and then bars and stem and then saddle. So the frame, was about 3,600. The wheels, those were pretty pricey. Those were about 2,000 each. Actually, no, those were about 18. No, those were about 2,000 each. The group set was the most expensive part of this bike. And this is something that I really wanted to, to make sure that I did invest money in. And I talked about investing money into bikes on this channel, I have a video on it. You definitely want to get something that is good that is going to hold up to your style of riding and i knew i knew i needed the best so I just, that's why i decided to go with the highest end group set from shram it's a good chunk of change it definitely is um the bars and stem in the saddle i believe were probably a couple hundred bucks so at the end of the day it was probably around twelve thousand dollars for this bike and i definitely am very happy with with it apart from the the issues that i already talked about the shifting is super it's super smooth it's super responsive the the frame is everything that i've looked for in a frame and it's aesthetically a bike that i really 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 love i'm not saying you guys go out and spend a bunch of money on bikes but if you're a cyclist and you do something like this every day of your life definitely something you know to invest time and sometimes extra money into like it's a it's a great hobby like every single time that people post you know bikes or post new cars or just new stuff in general on whether it's social media, YouTube, whatever it is, there is a lot of, uh, there's usually a lot of opinions on expensive things. And I, I generally don't really spend money on expensive things like this, but this is something once again, that I do every single day of my life. I still drive the same car that I bought, you know, six years ago, six, seven years ago. It's just, it's, it's like, this, this is something that I've really always wanted. And so that's why I decided to, to go with this and you know, people can have an opinion and whatever it is what it is. But regardless, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I wanted to talk about my new bike. And if you guys want to see more cycling videos from me on this channel, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have a question or anything like that, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.